Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing another Ruby on Rails speedrun using uh, Rails 7.1 and we're going to be using Unreal Engine this time to use Rails as the backend REST API for our super cool Unreal Engine game. I'm going to go ahead over here on Live Split, click 1 to start the timer. We're going to go over to DigitalOcean.com, click Create, click Droplets, then we're going to select a region. I'm actually going to full screen this. For the region, I have to choose Frankfurt because both of the US are currently down for maintenance or other reasons. You can then scroll down here, go over to Marketplace, search for the Docker, uh, which you can just type Docker, and then you can click that and then you're good to go. You come down to the uh, CPU options, click regular, and then you can probably get away with the $6 a month one. You then scroll down here, add an SSH key, and then you can name your droplet. Now I've already gone ahead and done this because uh, I've, I've done this so many times at this point, I know what to do. So we're going to have this droplet up for us, but we're going to go ahead and uh, get started with our actual project. So to do this, we're going to do a Rails new video dash dash API dash dash main. So grab the uh, Rails project from the uh, source branch of the GitHub repo, which is currently with the uh, like all of the features for for 7.1. It's like the in progress version. So you definitely don't want to use this for production, but for stuff like this, it's perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and CD into the video. And actually I'm going to open this up in uh, VS code because we're going to want to do, uh, I guess a little bit of DB seeding. We're going to come over to the DB, the seeds file. We're going to do a post.create uh, with a title of hello and a body of world and then we can go ahead and save that. So this will create a post for us, nothing fancy. We can then come into our uh, our bin and our Docker entry point. And then after the Rails DB prepare, let's maybe do a dot slash bin slash Rails DB colon seed, something like that. I don't know if that'll work or not, uh, but hopefully that'll work just fine from there. Now we can come into, I guess, uh, well, I guess we're done here, right? Let's come over to our console and let's do a git add dot git commit dash m uh, and then, oops, git commit dash m for init commit. And then let's do a uh, rails g scaffold post with a title and a body of type text. Go ahead and do a rails db colon uh, migrate. This should work. And now let's try to do a, uh, what do we want to do? We want to do a, uh, on the GitHub page. So we have to go over to github.com, go over to your account. I'm going to full screen this. On the right side, you want to click the plus button for a new repository. You're going to want to call this something like uh, Unreal on Rails, like that. Unfortunately, it's already taken for me. So I'm going to call this uh, UE5 on Rails, I guess. UE5 on Rails, and then I'll click Create Repository. At this point, we can come over here to the SSH, click on that, come down here to the second option, click on that, and then in your terminal, you can right click to paste, and then you can uh, do a git push. Uh, unfortunately, I do also have to do a git add dot git commit dash m for the uh, scaffold for posts. And then we can do a git push again for that change as well. We now have two commits. We push straight to main, totally fine. Okay, next let's come over to here. Let's do a copy. Let's do a SSH to root at in this domain. Then we'll type yes. And then the next thing we wanna do once we're in here is hit F11. We want to do a SSH key gen and I have the command ready. It's gonna be, oops, that's not right. That's fantastic. I love it when I copy a command and nothing works. Come over here and then after the dash C, we want to do a email for ourselves. Just like that. So we do a SSH dash key gen space dash T space uh, ED25519 space dash C. That should generate a ID uh, ED for us. That works. Now let's do a cat to tilde slash dot SSH slash ID. And then you're going to hit tab and then dot PUB for the public key. That's important. I'm going to move the timer and then I'm going to copy this. Next, we come over to GitHub and we come over to our profile, scroll down, click on settings, open this in a new tab, come over to the SSH and GPG keys. And then in the top right, you should see a new SSH key button. I'm going to name this UE5 on rails i'm going to come down here paste this and then hit add key 
Okay, at this point, we should be good to go. Uh, we can now grab our UE5 on Rails by going to the code button, SSH and copy, come down here and type git clone and then paste in that URL. We'll type yes, that should allow us to clone. Let's now CD into our UE5 on Rails and let's go ahead and let's run a, whatever that command was from DHH on his pull request, a docker build dash t app dot, just like that. <laughs> and now this should start building the image. Okay, now we can work on our UE5 stuff. Let's open up Epic Games Launcher, go over to the launch button so we can get out of this launcher as quickly as possible because it is actually one of the worst user experiences you'll ever have. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll create a blueprint project so we don't have to deal with C++ because that scares us. And then uh, from there, we just need to enable a plugin, unfortunately. So I'm gonna come over here and type UE5 on Rails, or UE5 on Rails, uh, already exists. Okay, sure, why not UE on Rails? Uh, and then we're gonna name, or we're gonna give this a third first person project. We'll say create, I guess, and we should be good to go. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna open, then we have to enable the plugin, and then we have to click restart, which is not, not really great, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so while this is running, we should uh, hopefully see that progressing as expected. I'm gonna go over to manage plugins. You can also go to edit and the plugins button right here, and then search for VA REST. That allows you to enable the REST API, and then we click on restart now. Like I said, we open it just to close it again. It would be really cool if we could just select that when we're first starting the project, but I guess that's probably beyond the scope of what they want their launcher to be because it's probably mostly just for the sake of making money. I mean, let's be honest. We are about six and a half minutes in, which is pretty cool because we're getting pretty close to done. The UE side of things is actually probably the easiest part. Uh, I'm gonna right click and create a folder, call this Blueprints. And we can do some visual scripting. We'll double click here, right click, go to blueprint class, click on actor, name this BP underscore rest API or something. We can drag this into the scene wherever we'd like and then maybe position it to zero, zero. And then we can double click on the blueprint actor. And then we can come over to the event graph, which is where we do our visual scripting. The event begin play, of course, fires as soon as the scene starts. We can drag off of this and we can do stuff. So this is where all your conditional stuff happens, like your branching if you want a yes or a if statement or whatever uh, with the Boolean, but we don't need that. Instead, what we wanna do is right click and we wanna search for that plugin we enabled, which was VA REST. Uh, and we want the subsystem, which allows us to call a bunch of methods from it one of which is the call URL method, which allows us to uh, call a URL. So we drag off of the event begin play. That tells us that from event begin play, we follow this line, we then call call URL, right? We can then grab from this URL button and we can promote this to a variable and then we can set this to be whatever we would like uh, the target URL to be. I'm gonna hit compile, which allows us to set a default value. Now for the default value, I'm actually gonna drag this over here and minimize, we can grab the IP of our DigitalOcean droplet. We can come over here and then in this default value, we paste the IP slash post slash one, for example. We can go ahead and hit compile. And then our callback function is the next thing we have to worry about. So for the callback, we drag off of here and we say this is a custom event. We name this whatever we'd like, get posts, sounds good enough to me. And then from here, if I click compile again, hopefully this will work, uh, we can drag off of here and get a response content as string, and we can do this. And then what we can do from here is drag off and say we want to print this string to the screen. And then it does require you to input a string, which we'll do right here, just like that. We now hit compile, and we can come over to our first person map, and we should be able to hit play at this point, but it's not gonna work. Uh, because we don't have our server up and running yet. So let's come over to our terminal. It's still installing Nokogiri because of course it is. If there's ever a gem that causes everything to be held up, that would be the one. Uh, so we're gonna wait a little bit and hopefully uh, I'll come back when this is done and we won't have wasted too much time here waiting for this to install. Okay, so that's done. Now we can go ahead and minimize Unreal again. We can come over here and go to DHH's post. We'll create this Docker volume by right-clicking and pasting. And then we can run this command right here. 
uh, but we do need to configure this a bit. I'm gonna control L. Uh, for this master key section, we do need to come over to our actual application and come down to the config folder, wherever that may be, uh, config. And then in the master key, we just copy this. The reason why this doesn't go up to the GitHub repo is because this is what allows you to decrypt everything in your application. So of course you don't want the uh, decryption key to be accessible to the entire internet. We'll go over here and paste this. I'm gonna hit enter. And this should hopefully run this container. Uh, it tells us we shouldn't be running in SQLite uh, production, uh, but we can't read, so joke's on them. I'm gonna come over to this uh, IP address, hopefully, uh, wherever this is. Um, just clicked on that, there we go, copy. I'm gonna paste this in and go to port 3000. Okay, so that's port 3000 right there. Let's go to slash posts. There we go. So there's our two posts. Now this is gonna run every time we do a, uh, every time we run it, it's gonna run this this uh, DBC because it's in our Docker entry. So you could remove this. Uh, it's just nice to have it there so we have more data if we want it. But now we have two, so we should be good to go. Uh, what we can do now is come over to our BP REST, click on this URL. And we actually want this to be port 3000 after the IP. So it's gonna be uh, the IP port 3000 slash post slash one. And now if we hit compile and we press the play button up here, we can see, uh, well, maybe, uh, maybe what I should do is right click here and add a breakpoint. And then we can hit play on this. And what you should see now, hopefully, uh, after we click continue is the uh, JSON structure up here. But yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and stop the timer. It was about 15, 16 minutes uh, to get a REST API integrated into Unreal Engine from scratch. And you don't really have to do a lot of thinking while you're doing it. But yeah, hopefully this is interesting. Hopefully this is helpful. And hopefully I will see you in the next video.